For me, probably the most interesting thing about uh, Gamfang Fet, the city and this whole area, is that the ancient city was completely enclosed by a nearly five kilometer long wall, part of which uh, you see behind me. And we are starting our tour right here at the fort at the northeast corner of the city wall. And I thought I'd start with uh, some of the information from the brochures that I have. Uh, this one says, the plan of the town is trapezium in shape with its length parallel to the river. Its town wall is 2,400 meters long in the north, 2,160 meters long in the south, 540 meters wide in the east, and 220 meters wide in the west. The town wall was made of laterite, of course. Uh, you you, you uh, hear a lot about laterite when you visit uh, Kham Phang Phet. It was made of laterite with 10 gates and battlement parapet on top. Watchtowers were built at its four corners. So I guess this would have been one of the watchtowers here. So watchtowers were built at its four corners and at intervals. A moat of 30 meters wide was dug next to the town wall. Archaeological evidence suggests that the water from the Ping River was conducted from the front of the town into the moat. And when the moat overflowed, the water was drained off into a canal. And there's, a little, there's a little bit of um, uh, discrepancy about exactly what's going on with the wall because this brochure says... Each side of the city walls has 10 entrances and seven remaining forts uh, with different names. So I don't know exactly how many gates there are and how many forts and how many battlements and how many towers. Uh, they give different numbers, different brochures. But I think the one I, tend, I choose to believe is that there's like 10 gates in total. Not 10 on each side, but uh, 10, uh, 10 in total. Special tip, no entry fee. There are several photo taking points, especially the points where big trees penetrate their roots above the wall. Biking along the road beside the city walls in the late afternoon is a good way to explore when sunlight shines through tree, through tree leaves onto the walls and road surface. But as I said, we're starting at the northeast corner of the city wall. Got my scooter parked here. And they mentioned all the trees that are now growing out of the walls and on top of the walls. And you can see some of that here. It's really quite interesting. Reminds me a great deal of uh, Angkor Wat, of course, in Cambodia. There's one here, one over there, one up on top there. And then as you look down the length, pretty much the entire wall has trees growing out of the top now. It's like a, uh, a long, narrow forest which is kind of interesting. And of course, as you can see, the wall itself is made entirely of a laterite. It's quite high on this side. This must be the full extent of it. I mean, this must be 10 feet and then another 10 feet. So here, yeah, it's uh, probably 20 feet high on the, on the inside here. All because of those pesky Burmese armies that kept invading. And the language perhaps is a little bit misleading because these sections at the corner, they call them fortresses. But of course, when I think of the word fortress in English, I think of something really big, like a, an entire castle would be a fortress. This is more like a, you know, a watchtower, a guard post, something like that. But what I find interesting is that in terms of constructing this whole thing, it all began with the moat, and you can see the moat here. So there was no moat originally. They dug this moat, and all the dirt that they dug out of the moat, they piled on the side, and they basically dug the moat and built the wall at the same time. And that's kind of an efficient process when you think about it. So here's the moat. Quite a, uh, 
a steep drop off right there. <laughs> yeah, on this side, that's got to be 15, 20 feet. Going all the way down to the, uh, the water, yeah, easily more than 20 feet. So pretty substantial barrier for anyone trying to in invade. It wouldn't be easy to uh, take this position if there were uh, soldiers up here. Yeah, quite a wide moat as well. So, yeah, it's quite a strong defensive... Well, what do I know about military tactics? But it seems like a strong defensive position. Uh, you, in any f enemy force would first have to deal with whatever's out there. There's probably some guard shacks out there. Then they got to get past the moat and then up this slope and then uh, over this wall. And if there are defenders on this wall, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty strong defensive position. Of course, as always, I end up with more uh, questions than answers. I still don't have an answer to my question of how many people actually lived here and who lived inside the walls, who lived outside them. I mean, were only the rich, the elite, the leaders, were they all protected inside the walls and regular farmers and other people were still just living out there in the open? Or was the entire town, the whole thing, enclosed in, behind the safety of uh, these walls? That I honestly don't know. But yeah, here we are. And uh, oh. when I first came here, I thought, it would be kind of cool to go for a walk, you know, and explore the whole length of uh, this wall. Actually, I'm going to walk along the top for a little bit. How can I not, looking at that? I thought it would be very cool to walk around the entire city, following the wall the whole way. But then I quickly realized what kind of a task that would be, uh, especially on a hot day. Um, the distances are greater than I realized. <laughs> so to really explore this wall, I think you'd, you'd want to have at least a bicycle. And better than that, I think you'd want your own scooter in order to uh, explore all of this wall. But yeah, look at this, it is so cool. Makes me wonder how many of these trees were in fact present at the time the wall was being built. I mean, this one right here in front of us, was this like just not here at all? It probably wasn't, right? It's not like they built the wall around it. Yeah, you can see the roots broke up the stone there, broke up the ladder, right? So yeah, probably none of these trees were here when the wall was built. This would have been a completely wide open view. And of course, again, if it's a military uh, defensive position, you would want it wide open. You, you wouldn't want all these trees here blocking your view. Because look ahead of us there. The entire length of the wall is completely forested. It's like a mini long, narrow forest. That is so cool. Maybe I should try to walk all the way around because with all these trees, you're actually in the shade the whole time. Though I'm pretty sure this shady portion doesn't last. But look at this. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, I'll walk just up to this group of trees up ahead and then uh, turn around and go back to the uh, scooter. Yeah, this is very cool. Gotta watch where you're stepping. There's a lot of uh, tree roots and laterite bricks here waiting to uh, trip you up. Huh, okay. Here's a uh, bit of a raised section with some cutouts here. And there's the uh, northeast corner. Let's go back and uh, get my scooter. As much reading as I've done about this area, 
I honestly don't know right this minute what kind of weaponry we're talking about, like at the time that this wall was built and there were soldiers all along this wall, what kind of weapons were they holding? What were they fighting the Burmese invaders with? What kind of weapons did the Burmese invaders have? Are we talking crossbows, bows and arrows? Uh, when was gunpowder invented? When did they start using uh, guns and cannons in uh, Thailand? I'm pretty sure this wall predates gunpowder, or at least the common use of uh, cannons and uh, rifles, things like that. All right, very cool. I don't know if it, I made it clear from uh, what I read in my description, but this whole, this entire city wall is completely open to everyone. It's not part of the historical park that you have to buy a ticket for. This is just out in the city, basically. So uh, normal daily life takes place all around these walls all the time. I'm sure local kids come here at night to hang out when it's cool and just sit on the wall. cause trouble. And here's the Northeast Corner Fortress, as they call it. So the jury is in. I looked at the map and I counted them myself. And according to the maps, there are 10 gates and nine fortresses <laughs> around the whole city wall. We saw one of the fortresses right there at the northeast corner. And most of the gates are also accompanied by a fortress. They tend to come in pairs, I guess. I've got the GoPro angled off to the side so you can see the, the wall as we ride along. I'm not gonna stop at every gate, of course. We'd be here all day. But maybe I'll stop at this next one because I think it's a combination gate and fortress. At the northeast corner, it was just a fortress. There was no actual gate. But here, I think we can see an opening. Yeah, it's a more complicated arrangement here. Oh, there's a ramp right there on the right. Yeah, I wonder what that ramp would be for because it doesn't go all the way to the top. And here's the gate. And uh, what is it called? There's a name here. So this is the, the Dao It Fortress and Gate. So it's sort of a, a combination of the two. Look at that. It's wide open now possible to uh, ride the scooter all the way in. Oh, look at that, okay. There's an opening on uh, each side here. Right there. And then there's another one over here on this side. Makes me think that there was uh, some kind of a wooden barrier placed across these two openings you know, and held in place in those big notches. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I'm going to hop off the scooter just for a couple of minutes. I don't know how well it came across when I rode up. It seemed pretty dark on the GoPro screen, but this is the big notch or the gap that I was talking about. And there's a corresponding... Uh, notch on the other side so if you if you laid some huge beams tree trunks you know from here across to there and then built up some kind of a uh, barrier this would be a 
a gate with a very strong door to get through. And here, yeah, you can see the outside of the, of the wall. In remarkably good condition, I have to say. Look at that. And, uh, I don't know if you can see how high it is based on that, but it's a lot higher than I am. I certainly wouldn't want to uh, have to scale that with defenders up there dumping rocks on my head or whatever it is they're doing up there. Let's take a look around the corner. Yeah, there's the uh, length of the moat. Yeah, this is a much more developed corner right here at this uh, gate because you've got this wide uh, platform. You don't have the uh, sloping dirt beside the moat like you do with the rest of the wall. But yeah, that moat is, uh, yeah, they weren't joking. That's, uh, that's 30 meters across, isn't it? 90 feet, 100 feet. So that was the Tao It Fortress and Gate. The next one along here is the, the Elephant Temple uh, Gate, Wat Chang, I believe. So I'll have to keep my eyes open for that. And then we reach a major road, we have to cross the road, and then uh, we end up in quite a wide open field on the other side. There are no houses over there. On this side, there's lots of people living on the left, a lot of houses, a lot of people there. But as soon as you cross over the road, there's kind of a, on the map they call it a campground, but I don't think there's any camping over there. It's just a big open field. I, I rode through there yesterday when I was just looking around. So here is the uh, Wat Chang Fort and Gate. Very similar to uh, Dao It, I believe. Oh no, that is quite special. Well, we gotta go check that out. It's different. I didn't notice that uh, the other day. There's actually a bridge of land going out to some kind of an island with a more of a fort on it. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we've got the gate here and then a bridge across the moat and then another uh, a fort up here. Ah, oh, look at that. A complete defensive position on the other side of the moat. Is that a good military uh, strategy? I assume it is. <laughs> oh, it looks like the moat continues around it. Ah. <laughs> now I get it. There isn't actually land on the other side. The uh, moat just dug out in a loop around this uh, peninsula, basically. They created their own peninsula and fortified it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Continuing on, the next gate would have been at this major road. So I guess it, it's been, I imagine it's been sort of cleared away. And then on the other side, we get, we head into this park that I was talking about. This is where the gate would have been. And 
And now we're on the other side. And as I said, this whole area is empty. There are no uh, people here. And I don't know if I ever mentioned it in any of the videos here, but the, na the very name Gamfeng Fet kind of means something like wall as hard as diamonds or wall shaped like diamonds. And if I remember right, the gates here are the Fet Gate and the Fi Gate and Fortress at the uh, far corner. I should spin the GoPro around just to show you the, uh, the middle. Like I said, I was not kidding about the, the park-like atmosphere here. This whole area is just a wide, flat lawn. It's like a golf course. There's no buildings, no homes, nothing here at all. On the map, it's marked as a playground, a uh, campground, but I don't imagine they'll uh, let you put up a tent here. <laughs> So here is the, this would be the Fet Gate, I think, or the Fet Fortress. Huh. Well, I think that's worth uh, checking out. It looks a little bit different up there. Just uh, make a quick pit stop here. I think this is the first one I've seen that has a wide series of steps like this leading right up to the uh, fortress part. And that's what uh, caught my eye. Ah, oh, look at that. They still have a... Quite the battlements are still in place up here for the soldiers to take their uh, defensive positions. Very cool. And uh, I assume the moat is right down there still. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, there's the moat. Very cool. I wonder what else would have been up here back in uh, the days when this was first built. based on uh, my experience during the day and that moat. I think if you came here at night wandering around, a little bit of mosquito repellent would not, uh, <laughs> would not go to waste. <laughs> I've seen uh, a lot of pretty, pretty big mosquitoes flying around me here. And from here you can, uh, you can get a view of the, uh, the walls of the fortress. Yeah, see how high they are. I think from here, there aren't a lot of gates and fortresses that would be worth uh, stopping at. I think it'd be kind of look much the same as the ones you've already seen. But there is one spot I remember that I want to take a look at, a closer look. It's a place just across the way on the other corner where a huge tree has grown out of the, um, out of the wall. I think I'll stop there and take a closer look at that. And then uh, complete our circuit around the... Gam, Gam Feng Fet city wall. And there it goes. Yeah, there's the road on the inside going all the way around there. And then back all the way to the northeast corner where we came from, maybe uh, two and a half kilometers away in that direction. The next one should be on the corner here. This would be the uh, Fee Fortress. The Fee Gate, actually. Right there. And since it's wide open, take just two seconds to ride up here and uh, take a look. Look at that. That is so cool. 
Every one is different, has a slightly different design. Here, okay, I was gonna say there's no notch, but there's sort of a notch up here at the front, no? No, not really. Huh. Still finding it all to be in surprisingly good shape. A nice close-up of that laterite brick. Very porous. A lot of holes running through it. Guessing there's a fortress up there on the corner to my, to our right. Yeah. And another gate right here, one of the ten gates. This one is the Hua Muang Gate. And there's the tree that I was talking about. tree. That is a major set of roots. Really uh, tearing the wall apart. Some tree. That tree, I think, is definitely the winner in terms of uh, striking scenery or imagery of this wall. It's a very complete section of wall here. You still you get that wall shaped like a hardened diamond image from the way it looks here and then you've got nature there in the form of that tree saying huh you think you built a high wall look at this tree and based on the uh, co the compass points this uh, fortress that we just looked at is exactly halfway around the wall from our starting point if you can believe that so we've actually gone, we see, it feels like we've seen a lot, but we've only gone halfway around the uh, perimeter wall. But just for the sake of being complete, I'm going to continue riding and go all the way back to our starting point. Though I don't think I'll be stopping anywhere unless I see something uh, really interesting. Oh, this is interesting. We just happened to be going by the inner district of the historical park and right here are uh, some of the class the Wat Pra Keo Kao Wat Pra Kao and Wat Pra That I believe the two temples in there And 
and there we have it. Right back at our starting point, the fort at the northeast corner of City Wall. And over there is the fort at the corner and the trees that we first saw growing out of the wall. And there's me looking much the same. So that was a complete circumnavigation of the old city of uh, Gam Feng Fet following the ruins. And actually the not so ruined uh, old city walls. Very impressive feature of this town. Yeah, well worth uh, checking out if you ever uh, end up here. So that's it. Time to uh, get out of the sun, go somewhere for a cold drink. I've definitely been thinking about a cold drink for a while. And uh, that's it for the, uh, the ruins, the city wall of Kam Feng Fet for today. And I'll see you in the next video.